I will be the first person to say that this stuff is not super exciting. Who wants to spend any time at all talking about citations and filing? But like many things in this class, we can't just skip it because it's not the most entertaining. When you're doing any sort of research project, you'll quickly get into trouble if you don't have a way of keeping track of what you find. And you could even get kicked out of school if you make it a habit of failing to cite correctly. Having helped students with citations for years, I'm totally on your side that this can be a pain, but you need to cite what you use because it's the right thing to do. If someone else's work has helped you, you need to acknowledge them. Research is rarely an individual sport. We all build on what we know and upon the work of others, the shoulders of giants and all that. I put this next point in bigger font and would have made it sparkly and blinky if that wouldn't have been totally annoying. A big part of creating a reference list is that so others can go out and find what you considered important. This is the big picture that a lot of students forget when stressing about citations. You may be wondering why we're talking about citing sources already. We haven't even started doing research and we don't have anything to cite or organize. Shouldn't we just wait until we're ready to create a reference list? Trust me on this one. Knowing the basics of citation style and having some sort of system to keep track of what you find before you get started is going to save you a lot of time and stress. Accidental plagiarism happens when you forget to properly cite a source. This is much less likely to happen if you keep track of everything you find. I know from personal experience that creating a reference list can be a challenge, but it's much less painful if you create the citations as you're finding them. Then all you do is add the ones you end up using to your reference list. Much less stressful that way. Yes, I actually have a citation philosophy. This has developed over a decade or more of seeing students totally freak out over creating a perfect reference list and then putting a lot less work and effort into the research and writing of the actual paper. All the students were getting out of the research project was how to create a perfect citation. I found and still find this to be ridiculous. Yes, citing is really important for the big picture reasons of being ethical, letting others find what you used, and generally not being a jerk. But an overemphasis on perfect citing is just stupid. Most of you are not in school to become researchers or scholars. Those are the folks that really need to be able to cite well. What I want to teach you is how to find, evaluate, and use research information. Yes, I want you to cite using APA format, but I don't weigh the citations heavily in any of my grading. Be forewarned, you are going to have professors who will just about fail you if you can't cite an article or book chapter correctly. That's not my style, so consider this a gentle introduction to citing. Okay, off of my soapbox. This will be my obligatory slide on the evils of plagiarism. Unless this is your very first semester as a college student, you definitely have heard the plagiarism speech from at least a couple of sources. My take on it is that if a source was helpful to your research, you need to cite it. If you're thinking of copying something word for word and hoping to pass it off as your own, just don't. I know some get away with it, but a lot more get caught and I don't want to be the one to fail you and be the reason you could potentially get kicked out of school. I'm always happy to help you figure out if something should be cited and how to go about citing it. Most all librarians are. I know that creating citations can make most anyone want to scream. I don't expect you to know how to do this off the top of your head, and there are many sources that can help. Of course, you can buy the citation manual. This is the definitive source. Even if you don't buy the manual for this course, you'll want to get one eventually. There's also other online guides. Just type into Google something like APA format or APA citation and you'll find thousands of sites that have been created to help. Stick with ones from a university library or a university writing center. These will generally be the best. Citation generators allow you to enter the different parts of your source and they automatically create the citation for you. That's okay if you just have a few citations, but kind of challenging if there are more since you have to enter them one at a time. EasyBib is an example of a citation generator. Lastly, you can use a reference manager, which is a fancy way of describing a tool that not only can help you cite correctly, but it can also help you keep your research organized. A couple of free options are Zotero and Mendeley. These reference managers are wonderful, but they do take a bit of learning. They're not required for undergrad students, but if you plan on going to graduate school, they are essential. So what do you do when you need to cite something that's a little less common than a journal article or a book, like maybe a tweet or an online news story or an interview? First, look at what the manual has to say. If the manual has nothing or it's unclear, then go to one of the official websites, like APA's website. 
APA also has a really great blog, which answers a lot of the very strange citation questions. Next, see what Google has to say. Be as specific as possible. Don't just ask for APA citations. Ask for APA citations tweets. Again, the university and library websites are your best bets. One thing to know, there is some inconsistency when the manual doesn't have anything definitive to say. Remember, the goal of citing is to make it possible for your readers to find the source you used. So include as much information as possible within the correct format. I take a lot of time to provide detailed feedback on your citations and your annotations. Please, for the love of everything, read and apply the suggested changes. I will tell you right now that it makes me crazy to fix the same errors in your assignments again and again and again. I 100% know who is and isn't going through the feedback and that will be reflected in your grade. In the second half of this week, we're going to focus on why and how to stay organized. No, not in like a New Year's resolution sort of way. I cannot help you clean your garage. I can't even help myself there. I can help you keep track of what you find when it comes to research. This is super important, especially if you don't want to lose that perfect article or website or book chapter. You can't cite it if you don't have the reference written down or saved somewhere. I'm going to talk about some options, but I also want to hear what you are currently using to keep track of research, especially if it's been working for you. All right, thank you guys and have a great week.